Well, Garmin, uh, Garmin's been making uh, significant investments and uh, having uh, good successes in expanding our aviation business across uh, many segments uh, of aviation. So uh, we have uh, great new products for, uh, for certified aircraft, like 182s all the way up through uh, King Airs, and we're working on uh, beach jet solutions, um, all the way down to uh, components and, and equipment that, that's very attractive for people that are building their own aircraft. Craft. And uh, so Garmin's made a, a significant investment in this general aviation space to offer uh, feature-rich products that add safety into the cockpit and, uh, and really make it easier for, uh, for folks to, to be able to fly and fly behind Garmin products. We've got great products uh, for, for aircraft, whether it's a, a simple uh, uh, angle of attack indicator, uh, which is actually fairly uh, new safety enhancement that, uh, um, that a lot of folks are, are promoting uh, in the industry right now, all the way up to, uh, to very large integrated avionics systems that can replace your you know, a conventional six-pack uh, steam gauge uh, equipped aircraft with uh, an electronic primary flight display, multifunction display, uh, with maybe some engine monitoring capability. Uh, of course, you'll have GPS for navigation as well as your traditional uh, navigation radio and communication radio. So Garmin's future, we, uh, we, everything we do is, is to, to better kind of the, the flying environment and we, we, uh, we take a lot of the, most of the money that we, we make on our products, we actually reinvest uh, into future product development. So we are always working on uh, new technologies, new ways of doing things, uh, trying to expand our product offerings as well. But uh, as, as you look into the crystal ball of what, you know, what aviation is potentially going to look like in the future, um, you know, I think you're going to continue to see more of the integration um, that we've started to see over the past few years. Latin America has, has tremendous opportunities to, uh, um, to, to bring a lot of this great new technology um, available uh, to, to, you know, to everybody in the world into to Latin America. We, uh, I, I think from, a, you know, from an economic standpoint, um, obviously your, your viewers will, will understand the economic environment that they're, you know, they're surrounded by and, and in some situations are much better than, than other situations. Um, but the technology uh, anymore is really a global technology and so it is very accessible to, uh, to anybody in the world. The technology that, that we're coming out with um, continues to evolve and, and I think because of the evolutionary nature uh, and, and the way that we are looking at the way pilots interact with their aircraft, uh, we're trying to, to, to make uh, smart offerings on how to provide them maybe different forms of information or feedback on the way they fly um, so they can still fly the way they're used to but, uh, but maybe we're able to do things in a way that, that subtly suggest, hey, look out over here or be careful um, if you're starting to get into this situation. So um, this ESP technology, electronic stability protection technology, um, it does not take control of the aircraft uh, per se where you cannot um, control it anymore. It, if, if you're flying along uh, and you start to get into a steep bank, it's actually, it's just going to try to nudge you back. And if you, if you push against it and say, nope, this is what I want to do, that's, that's fine. You can still, you still have complete control over the aircraft, but it's just trying to say, hey, I'm, I'm trying to get you back into what, what I think is a more natural and more normal configuration. And, and so I think we continue to try to do things like that to, to again, add the safety and add the, uh, uh, a little bit of additional, you know, smartness to it uh, in case of uh, in, in emergency.